So you've got your revegetation area planned out but now you need to think about how you're going to protect your planted trees and shrubs over the longer term. If you're after more biodiversity on your farm then you're going to need to consider permanent exclusion of grazing animals because native shrubs, grasses and ground cover are sensitive to the trampling effects of livestock. For most revegetation projects, fencing is the most effective way of protecting plants from livestock. Good stock proof fencing will give you peace of mind that the work you've done in terms of restoring areas and planting remnants will be safe from the impacts of cattle. Fencing can also be used to help exclude native wildlife. So when you're doing your planning for your site, you do need to think about what pest animals you have present. So that's going to influence your choice of guards for your site. It'll also influence the type of fence that you put up to manage them. If you've got hares and rabbits, control for those animals might need to start 12 months before you actually go and do your planting because they can wreak havoc in a site in a night. This particular fence was put up, it's near a river, so two electric, two plain, quite simple, but it's this bottom hot wire that we had to put in to manage wallabies at this site. And that has helped take the pressure off the reveg that was planted here originally. Fencing designs can vary a lot depending on the needs of the landholder, but for Northeast CMA, the standard fence that we recommend is a seven wire, 900 high plain fence. So that's seven standard plain wires with no top barb. And the reason we don't use top barbs is to stop native animals getting snagged on them. Particularly squirrel gliders and some birds can be quite prone to getting snagged on the wire. So we prefer to use only plain wire and that way um, we're not gonna interfere with any native wildlife. The use of electric fences should also be considered. Because they present a psychological barrier to animals, they're less likely to get passed through or leaned on, so they're less prone to damage. They're also less likely to cause injury to your animals if they happen to get tangled up in them, like they do with barbed wire. They're very affordable because they don't require as many wires and can just be as simple as attaching a belly wire to an existing fence. One downside of them is though, is that you need to check them regularly because if they've got too many weeds touching them or if there's any broken insulators or any problems of that sort, then they won't work. So you need to regularly check them. When you're setting up fencing uh, from the design phase, you need to look at the alignment, minimise the number of strainers because that reduces the cost and pick your best alignment for the fence in terms of being able to install it. Also in the design phase, you need to consider what your maintenance requirements are for the reveg block. So the width and number of gates and their placement is important, especially if you need to access it with heavy machinery or graze periodically with livestock once the block is established. Fencing should be the first step in getting your revegetation project right. For help with your fencing as part of your project, please get in contact with the North East CMA via the website details shown on the video below or contact your local land care group.